Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you're having a great day. This is an oil painting I've just finished. It's a remastering of a digital painting I did a couple of years ago. Lots of thick brush strokes going on here. Took me three days to do. There's a bit of an overlaying. I want to show you all the techniques that I employed, including a bit of the old sign writing uh, techniques that uh, I used to do use 20, 30 years ago. So let's just see how I got on with it. So as is becoming my norm now when I'm doing oil painting, I sketch out the um, scene first. So I'm using a small brush there and I've just mixed up a little bit of cobalt blue with some white because that's sort of the predominant color. And I think that if I sketch with that, I, I can sort of lose the outline quite easily in the um, initial painting or initial uh, glazes, I suppose. So as you can see, I'm taking my time, nice and steady, really looking at the, um, I've actually got the photo. I'll put the photo up for you to see right now. Uh, I've actually got the uh, photo that I'm using as a reference. And the reason I'm using the photo as a reference and not the painting at this stage is I just felt, I, because I'm working on such a big canvas, um, I felt I needed a little bit more detail going in there and I could see that on the photo. And also, um, it did give me a problem though working off the photo, which I discovered later, was that the um, little building on the left-hand side wasn't on the photo I, I was using as a reference. So clearly not the original photo I used. So now I've mixed up some cobalt blue and some white, and I've mixed up three uh, different batches of paints. So I've got cobalt blue and white, and then an even lighter one. And then I took a bit of the um, mid color and mixed a bit of alizarin crimson in it, just to uh, give it the sort of purpley look. And what I'm doing there, you'll, you'll see, I'm not sort of working sort of right to left, I'm putting it on in patches because I've got like three batches of paint. I was concerned that if I used all of the one color and just worked my way across it, I would run out of paint. So I thought if I did it in patches, um, it wouldn't matter if I ran out, I could use the light color or the uh, slightly tinted one with the alizarin to finish it off. As it happened, I didn't run out of paint. I mixed plenty of, in fact, I'd got enough mixed up to uh, use some for the um, C in the foreground of the painting. I'm having to hold the easel there because it's quite wobbly when I'm working on such a big canvas as this and using the uh, inch and a half decorator's brush that I'm using to get the color on. Again, I'm not into particularly blending out too much i'm quite happy to see the brush strokes i want it to be a painterly picture not a photographic representation as you can see on the thumbnail there um it's very painterly and i'm i want to keep it that way if i can so sort of employing my decorator skills there to cut in along the line of the bridge along the rooftops still using that inch and a half brush and i don't know if you can see i've i i've put a, a couple of brushfuls of the uh, color with the alizarin crimson there's a little bit more and it is a subtle change it's not a crazy amount of alizarin crimson just a little bit. So I begin with the sky then. That's the sky pretty much finished. I'm just sort of um, going in there and making sure I've got some brush marks visible rather than um, blending it out. I'm making a conscious effort to get in brush strokes that you can see. I really like that effect and I want that to be 
um, a, a main part of the painting. I want you to be able to see those brush strokes. I think that is definitely part of my style. So I'm having a, a probably a bit of a clean up there. Coming back in, just putting in a few more uh, brush strokes. So um, although I'd got the colour on the all of the sky, I then sort of go in and paint over it again. So you can see these brush strokes getting an air out of the brush there. And just sort of deepening up the colour in the odd place. Notice I haven't tried to get a sky that looks exactly like the painting. This I'm using the um, digital painting as a point of reference for the colour really so I'm not too worried about it being exactly the same I may go in and put a lighter area for a cloud uh, into or where the main source of light is in the sky a bit later on but um, I'm pretty happy with that and I might not touch it again I'm okay with that how that's going although I still seem to be just sort of finding areas where I need to put a bit more colour. That was just where the sky came down in between some buildings. Now I'm straight in there, look, doing the sand and I've got the light area in. I mixed up four or five different colours using burnt sienna, burnt umber, white and yellow ochre for this. So the really highlighted area is yellow ochre and white. You can see I've got the yellow ochre going in in the foreground there using the blue that I got left over from the sky, brushing that into the water. And then I'm into the buildings and I'm using the same colour that I'd mixed up. So it all, it's all going to tie in. And this is the initial um, ground under uh, underpainting really that I've got going off here. Been quite bold there with the colours on the buildings. So notice I'm using a colour and then sort of working uh, all over the painting wherever I think I could use that colour. Using fairly big brushes. I'm not one for fiddling about with little brushes. I ended up re-sketching those... Um, arches several times before I got them exactly where I wanted and also moved uh, some boulders you don't really see them in the painting but they are in the photograph put in a few strokes to indicate stonework on that bridge very subtle very delicate working on that bridge and at this point I'm very happy with how it's going I get some strong yellow oak colour Mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna into that, uh, maybe a bit of cobalt blue to knock it back a bit. Put some grazing on the on the roofs, and at this point, I'm looking at the photograph again, not the um, painting. And when I do look at the painting, I think ah, those those roofs need more blue in, so I just go in and stick some blue in there. Then I put some sort of Int of uh, detail in on that bridge. It's not a bridge, is it? It's um, I don't know. It's like a jetty or a pier or something or a, um, a water break. I, I have noticed you 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 may have noticed as well that I've got the boats too big, uh, or they are bigger than the original. Uh, painting I don't know if I'm going to leave them that big or if I'm going to make them a little bit smaller because at this point uh, I've got to say I've not finished the painting so uh, I'm recording I'm recording this audio having done the first day's work or first few hours work on it uh, and then I decided I need needed to leave it to let it dry so I thought I'd do the audio why uh, the process is fresh in my mind of what I was doing. 
The dark colour on the underside of the boat, I used um, Thalo Turquoise and Alizarin Crimson to make a really uh, dark colour. And then I start strengthening up. I, I'm very much aware that the foreground colours need to be much darker, um, much stronger. So I start uh, going about that. And then I put that big brush full of, um, there, look, that alizarin. Uh, alizarin crimson is a real strong staining pigment. And that kind of dominated the, the painting. So I started to work over that. You can see I'm um, adding, trying to get in uh, different colours. And I'm using a, a number four flat uh, black hog airbrush to do that. But I, at this point, I know that um, I'm sort of fighting a losing battle now. Because I'm... I'm really going to run the risk of um, that background getting sludgy. So I start, I'm just sort of going through the process of uh, deciding what to do. And then in the end, um, as you can see there, I decide to soften it all off and blend it out. I thought if it looks a little bit muddy, it doesn't matter because what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that dry. And when it's dry, I'm going to overpaint it and add lots of fresh color into it. But it has given me a ground for that nice deeper tone that I needed. I managed to save it. It's not too muddy. If I look at the painting, there's all sort of lots of very subtle grade off colors, which are nice. It's not just one massive um, horrible gray. And then I just add a little bit of highlight on the boat fiddle with the boat a little bit and then I decide that I need to call it a day so at this point I'll say goodbye and see you in a couple of seconds so here we are back day two now uh, the painting's dry in actual fact this was three days of, we had the weekend in between um, the first day's painting and this day so it's quite dry I use liquid quite a lot uh, in in my paint so it does dry pretty much overnight but um so i've had a ch chance to look at the painting and decide where i need to go with it and the first thing was uh that um the values are all wrong i need some darker tones in there uh, before i really uh, do anything else it's all looking a little bit flat i'm pretty happy at this stage with the uh, buildings and the um i'm going to call it a bridge i know it's not a bridge the, the three arches bit and uh but the foreground definitely needs to be strengthened up and just for the next couple of minutes unfortunately when i recorded this i forgot to uh, switch the focus to auto so for a couple of minutes it's going to sort of every time it catches the camera catches me it focuses on me and then out again. So I'm sorry about that, but it's only for a few minutes. I don't I hope it doesn't um, disrupt your viewing pleasure too much. So I'm mixing um, pretty much um, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, and I think I said quintinone magenta. For those greys and i've got burnt umber and cobalt blue for the um darker shadows so i'm not going to get i didn't use i put Payne's gray out on my palette and i didn't use it once um what i did do at the end of the day or every time i had a clean up i sort of boxed all of the dirty oil colors that i got left on the palette and, and instead of throwing them away I, I mixed them all together to make a sort of a, a, a gray. Invariably, it came out a greeny colored gray, which I used a lot for um, tinting or, or mixing with other colors. So I was I just wasn't wasting paint, but I didn't use Payne's gray for this. And I'm not going to get any real major darks because I'm using cobalt blue. And cobalt blue doesn't really... 
um, lend itself to mixing dark darks. If I wanted sort of black darks, I would have probably been using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Uh, sorry, uh, burnt umber for for the darks. But um, I didn't want anything too dark. So I'm feeling much happier now because I've got the um, darks in in the mid ground coming into the foreground. I have to say that the video um, colours are a little bit off at the minute. So, but I um, on the third day of recording, I've upgraded my camera and I'm using my um, Panasonic G9. Uh, I've invested in a little bit of kit. So I can use that because there I can get pretty much accurate color reproduction in the viewfinder. Uh, and I felt that if I'm doing painting videos, you need to be able to see accurately what the colors are. So on the third day, the color accuracy should be a lot more accurate. I'm still working off the painting here, by the way. And you can see that because I've got the thumbnail in the bottom left corner as the painting. But I do switch on the third day. I switched to the photo to get in the final detail on the boats. And um, I sort of, the painting had, had taken on a life of its own and I, I no longer wanted to refer to the original digital painting. I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to make this its own painting in its own right. So I do change uh, to the photo a little bit later on. You will notice also that I've missed... Um, the blue boat out that's in between the two foreground boats. And I just felt that that was blocking your access into the scene. And um, it wasn't adding anything to the painting. In fact, it was uh, distracting from it. So I decided to leave that boat out completely. As I'm painting this boat, um, this is... I think pretty much coming near to the end of the second day perhaps but I'm thinking that I've got the uh, foreground side of the boat a little bit low and it needed to be just raised a bit so I do uh, do that on the third day uh, in fact you can see I've done it there look I've actually raised that up It's interesting to look back at this and see um, how I've how, how the processes that I've done to paint this because uh, they they change the the swap. Uh, what I mean by that by swapping, I'm sort of painting areas light and then I paint them dark again and then I paint them light again. So I sort of they go from dark to light and dark to light. Um, so I, I was miles away then, just sort of locked in looking at the video, sort of uh, mesmerised at what I was doing. I've added two more boats uh, above the boat on the left. I just felt uh, that they needed to go in a little bit. So I've just blocked them in for now. And I decided that I need some stronger colour in the foreground, just to push that forward a bit and some um, lighter tones as well. And that, the blue of the water is just way, way too strong. It wasn't that strong in the, and it isn't that strong in the painting at all. So we're still in uh, day two. And I, I now decide that I've strengthened up the foreground. I need to go in and work on those stone walls. And I start off um, being very delicate and putting in quite small stones as I'm working along uh, just to sort of pick up the, the detail. And it isn't really detail. It's still very loose painting, but they are small brush strokes. And when I do it, I look back at the original painting and um, I decide that then it's not the way to go. It's not kind of, it didn't seem to be fitting in with the rest of the painting. 
So there you can see I start to uh, block it out again. I've added some stronger colour to the, um, let's call it the bridge on the right hand side. And I, I really think that that sort of really enhances that and pushes that forward. So I, I, I really like that. So I've just sort of now blocked out all those delicate little brush strokes. I didn't like them at all. Uh, they they just were not happy for me and at this point i'm contemplating whether to put you see there's a building on the left hand side in the mid ground of the original digital painting i was toying with the idea to put that in it wasn't in on the photo uh, that's why it's not appeared on this painting and i'm still toying with the idea whether to put it in or not um but in the end I chose not to. I'm still um, shocked that I don't remember painting the boat with the light colour um, in the in the front side of the boat or the left side of the boat. I don't remember painting that light like that. So it just shows you how uh, things uh, or your perception of things change. So this is getting pretty close to the end of the second day. I'm just sort of fiddling and thinking if I, if I keep going, I'm going to make things too muddy. I just decide to um, beef up the tree a little bit, that palm tree, add a bit more colour to that. And just sort of fiddling a little bit now, I'm sort of messing with that um, rock that's right in the uh, middle of the beach, back up against the wall. And then we're moving into day three. So at this point, I'm not using any um, source material, no photographs or anything. What I'm, I decide to do is I've had a good look at the painting. And I think that what I need to do is add some complementary colours um, across the painting uh, just to make it pop a little bit. So uh, the buildings are, although they don't look orange, and in fact, the the closer to orange uh, but with white added so i need to put the complementary color into that which is blue so i'm mixed up a, a real uh pale cobalt color and 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 then start over painting that into the buildings and you can see i'm doing a similar sort of mix uh, uh, well first of all i have some lighter um yellow ochre to the left hand side of the wall the, the the foremost wall and then start adding touches of blue in there just to add the uh, complementary color and i'm just putting in very delicate brush strokes of complementary colors over the area and then i decide to work on the boats and i pick up an old sign writer's brush uh, this is a pure sable and it's got a flat head so it looks like a watercolor brush but in fact, it's designed for sign writers so you can get these nice sharp edges on the uh, the letters when you're painting letters. And I use it here because although this is a sort of a very loose painting, it, you know, it's not realistic at all. I wanted to get the, the planks on the boats pretty reasonable, not, you know, not massively detailed or too neat, but... Um, it's that seemed to me to be uh, the way to do it. So I mixed up some colour with uh, liquid, so it was a nice uh, creamy consistency that would flow off the brush easy. The painting below it's dry, and then I just start uh, picking out the detail on these boats, knowing full well after I can go over it again with um, a hog air brush and just sort of make it look a little bit looser if I want to you can see there I am um, paint, painting the uh, foreground boat and I've gone back to my og airbrush now because I felt for this this needed to it was looking a little bit too um, too neat and I, I wanted it to look a little bit more uh, painterly and sort of you can see the brush strokes rather than that neat sign writing brush. But I do keep picking it up a lot, just to add, uh, I suppose, to get the form of the boat a little bit more accurate, just in places. 
And I'm now adding some dog color into the boat to um, show that sort of varnish dark wood there. But I'm still making sure that I've got complementary colors in there. And then I decide to uh, work it on the foreground a bit more because um, I just felt that it, it needed to pop a little bit more. I really wanted the foreground to um, be really forward. So I put some highlights in it and I'm gone completely contrasted against the uh, controlled brushwork with the sable. I just get sort of a, a reasonably big brush and put real thick brush strokes on and I had some uh, the similar sort of strokes for the water behind the boats as well and at this point I'm thinking all of a sudden now this is the point I'm thinking yes this has come together I am really liking it this is not far off from being finished I had a few ropes in there as well I've actually been out and bought myself a new uh, sable brush um, for putting in detail. I felt that, because this sound writing brush I'm using for the detail was just uh, too thick and the smallest og air brush I've got was too thick as well. And then I thought, let's get this seagull in. It just adds so much life uh, to the photograph. I thought it's got to work in the painting. Uh, so this was a, a gamble because obviously I could mess up the sky behind this. So I just take some light colour and uh, start painting in a silhouette of the bird, I suppose, really. And this was a little bit tricky. I'm not using a mole stick or anything. So I'm just sort of trying to control that brush. But I still wanted it to be look very loose and, and free. So I've got the sort of silhouette in. Then I'm going to pick up some dark colour. Cobalt blue. Um, the Quintantinone or whatever it is. Magenta. And probably um, a bit of burnt sienna or something. Maybe a bit of yellow ochre. And I'm looking at the photograph quite closely and painting the shadows. I'm showing you this in real time so you can see exactly what I'm doing. It's quite nerve wracking really this was. And I know that I'm going to um, go around the sky and tidy it up. I'd already made the decision. And it wasn't going to be a difficult job because the sky was just uh, pretty much cobalt blue and white in some areas. So I knew if I just mixed up a very light cobalt blue mix, I could work on the sky and it would fit in quite nice. Strengthen up that color there. I think this is where I kind of, Put a stroke in, yeah, and I think it. Oh man, that's too much. Uh, and that's when I decide I'm going to do the sky, paint the sky around it, and um, sort of tidy up the shape of the bird. But I hope you can see here how I've painted the shadows in. And then sort of um, putting a mid-tone in there. I just need some highlights on the front part of the wing and the head. And th this is going to be pretty much done. So it looks as though it's um, just been put on with a couple of strokes, but you can see... I was really taking my time and um, placing every brush stroke very carefully. I think this is where I'm going with the white, yep. Yeah.
And there we go. It's starting to look. Well, to me, it's looking like a bird. I hope you think so too. It's all subjective, isn't it? Sometimes I think when I make these videos, I should, in actual fact, comb my hair. Or just tidy it up a little bit. There we are. The, the, the photo, I have to say, um, the, sorry, the painting, it looks, there's more definition on it than, than this uh, video. You see I'm working on a canvas, it's bobbing up and down. That's a distraction. But I do like working on canvases because um, when I've done them, I can stick a nail in the wall and just pop the canvas on the nail and I don't have to frame it or anything. It all looks good. Uh, so it's a kind of um, an easy way. You, you're not got the expense of, of framing lots of pictures to do an exhibition. You can just take along... 20 or so paintings uh, not that I've done that for a while because I've been doing all the digital stuff but uh, when I've been painting you can take along 20 or 30 paintings and just hang them up without um, having to put picture frames around them uh, which is nice it it's, uh, saves a lot so I think uh, in the long run to buy a canvas it is cost effective Unless you definitely want to frame a painting. And then, you know, there's cheaper ways of doing it, like on um, putting a primer on a board or something. But I, I do like the canvases. And they're easy to light. They can, you can comb around easy and everything. So it's working for me. This The, the old painting, this old painting took approximately, I would say, one full day. In, in actual fact, it was two half days, uh, a good half days, like uh, five hours a time, and then another two hour stint on the third day. This uh, third day wasn't, uh, I didn't spend half as long on it as I did on the um, other days. Nice shot of me head there. I think I must be mixing paint at this point. Got the old mall stick out again. I just put some warmer shadow on the uh, back of the wing. And the uh, body of the, the, the seagull. And that, that's looking... I like that. I, I, was, I was In the end, I was very happy how that came out. And I got to, to be honest, I had to paint the sky anyway, or areas of the sky, because uh, the mole stick, there's a bit of string on the mole stick you see there, got a touch of paint on it, and it just touched the uh, sky. And I tried wiping it off, and it was starting to lift the paint, so I thought, I've got to touch that up anyway. I think that's why I decided to paint the bird, because I knew, really, I, there was uh, nothing, I got nothing to lose. This must be pretty much finished soon. I keep sort of going over it and fiddling with it. But yeah, I'm I'm happy with that now. So um, now all I've got to do is, uh, well, I've already signed it. Uh, just go in with this sky. You can see I'm sort of, I'm messing about picking different brushes. And then in the end, I decide I need a smaller one uh, just to get around the uh, bird. And then I'm just sort of take that color and, and tidy up around the buildings and put a nice soft cloud in. Just sort of feather it away. You see my iPad just there in the, uh, the side on the uh, right. I, I keep the eye, my iPad at eye level. So I'm not struggling to see the photo. And there we have it. That is it. That is my um, remastering of uh, St. Ives painted in oils. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. 
If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I am going to have lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. Don't forget to check out the digital painting as well. I'll put a description, uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.